okay? So my trends, the two trends that I want to talk about are atomic size and something called electronegativity, all right? So some of these are really easy. The other ones kind of go against what you might think. Um, all right, now, our trend in atomic size. As you go down the left side, okay, think about this. What do you know about every time you go down one space on the periodic table? What do you gain? You gain energy levels. That's important. Okay? Listen, you do gain electrons, but the most important thing with electronic or with the a size of the atom is the energy level. Because think about this. Like if this is your nucleus right here, hydrogen's going to have one energy level. Lithium's going to have two. Sodium's going to have three. Potassium is going to have four. And it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger the further you go down. Does that make sense? Yes. So as you go down, atomic size increases. Okay? And the reason is because the number of energy levels increases. All right. Can I take a picture of this? I don't care, dude. Now, <clears throat> as you go left to right on the periodic table, what are you gaining? You're gaining electrons and you're gaining protons. The more important thing is the protons here. So here's the thing. Most people think, oh, we're gaining stuff. The atom's getting bigger. That's not true. The atom is actually getting smaller as you go to the right on the periodic table because everything in the same period, same row, has the same number of energy levels. However, as they gain more protons and more electrons, remember, the, the atom is mostly empty space. So really... What's happening is the size of the atom is based off of how far the outer energy level is from the nucleus. Well, if there's a bunch of empty space, there's a lot of room for it to be able to move around. So in this case, it's gaining something called nuclear charge, which is the charge on the nucleus, which comes from the protons. Okay? So in this case, atomic size decreases because... The pull coming from the nucleus is stronger and it pulls the outer energy level in further. So as you go left to right, size decreases. Okay? And if you want to label this like nuclear charge increases, you can do that. And then as you go down the, the groups, or down the column, I guess, um, the energy levels increase. All right, is everybody with me so far? On the top? Yeah. Do nuclear charges increase also? Nuclear charge is the reason, okay. yeah. Nuclear charge increases, and that's the reason why the atom gets smaller. Because it pulls the outer electrons in further. Because there's more neutrons. More protons. Is the, yeah, that's the main, main thing. All right, now. The other term that we're going to take a look at just real quick is called electronegativity. And this is the pull of the nucleus on the electron. So the higher the electronegativity is, the more that those the the more that the nucleus pulls on the electrons. The less that the electronegativity is, the less that it pulls on the um, electrons. So think about this. 
Do you think this is going to be high electronegativity or low electronegativity? High. It's going to be high because the nuclear charge is really high over here. So although atomic size decrease is going in this direction, electronegativity increases. Okay? And then going down a group, I'm just going to tell you this one because this one's a little bit less obvious. The outer energy levels, they are further away from the nucleus as you go down the, the column here because you get more energy levels. So those energy levels that are outer on the outside are going to be further and further away because you get more of them. So the electronegativity is going to decrease going down a group because the energy level, the outer energy level is farther away from the nucleus. Therefore, the nucleus cannot pull on it as much. Okay? So, if you want a, kind of an easy way to think of this, wherever the atomic size is small, electronegativity is high. Wherever the atomic size is large, that's where the electronegativity is low. So what do you think the most electronegative element is on the periodic table? And be careful because it's not as quite as obvious as you would think. No. And it'd be the same as the other side. Any thoughts? Okay, I did hear somebody say helium. And it actually is that corner. However, does helium want any more electrons? No. No, because it's a noble gas. It's already stable. Therefore, fluorine is actually the most electronegative element on the periodic table. This is the most, ele this is the most electron greedy element. Because it's the smallest, other than helium technically, it's going to be very small and it has a ton of nuclear charge. So it's going to pull electrons to itself more than any other atom on the periodic table. Francium is going to be the least electronegative. There's going to be no other element on the periodic table that gives up an electron more easily than francium. That's why those two elements are the two most reactive elements on the periodic table. Okay? All right, keep this periodic table because you're going to need it for the game on Monday. All right?